I'm Andy Revkin. I cover the environment for the New York Times. A particular focus for years now of mine has been the Arctic, which is in this amazing state of flux. The sea ice in 2007 and 2008 pulled back to uh, levels haven't been seen in decades. There's a rush on to claim the Arctic seabed under the Law of the Sea Treaty, which the U.S. now is giving stronger signals that we're going to uh, ratify. President Bush, before he left office, said to uh, the Senate, please, please, pretty please do that. Now there's a new Canadian Broadcasting Corporation documentary, Battle for the Arctic, that's uh, given a fresh update on the situation up there. In the battle for the Arctic, this is the jewel in the American arsenal, the U.S. Coast Guard's newest and most advanced icebreaker, the Healy. This fall, it returned from its latest scientific mapping mission in the far north. Larry Mayer has been the chief scientist on board for the past two years. A plum assignment for a boy who grew up in the Bronx dreaming of exploring the oceans. The dream of an explorer is to go to places that, that people haven't gone before. And, and the Arctic is very much that kind of place. And uh, we're always saying that we know, we know uh, much less about the bottom of the ocean than we know about the backside of the moon. American scientists are competing with their counterparts from Russia, Canada, and other polar countries in a race to map the vast unknown regions of the Arctic Ocean. Global warming is turning the far north into a resource hotspot. Beneath the rapidly melting ice lies much of the world's undiscovered oil and gas reserves. What has set off this latest wave of Arctic exploration is a treaty called the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Under the treaty, a country's territory can be expanded much further if it can prove the ridges and rock formations underneath the water are connected to its continental shelf. The polar nations that border the Arctic have only 10 years from the time they signed the treaty to submit their scientific studies to the UN. So here, just 500 miles from the North Pole, Canadian scientists are scrambling to map uncharted territory in a harsh and forbidding landscape before their deadline of 2013. Uh, Eureka, it's Arctic Camp. The Russians, for their part, have only until May of this year to submit their claims. But that didn't stop them from boldly planting a flag at the bottom of the ocean floor underneath the North Pole two years ago. Artur Chilingarov led the expedition. He's Russia's most famous explorer and an outspoken nationalist politician in parliament. For us, the North Pole is a Soviet achievement like space flight. Gas, oil, nickel, diamonds, gold, well, everything. Everything that is possible today. And it is tied to Russia's economic interests. Back on board the Healy, in the Arctic waters far off Alaska, Larry Mayer deploys some of the latest mapping technology, called multi-beam sonar. What we can bring to bear now are very sophisticated uh, mapping systems that allow us to to map not just one little spot on the seafloor, but an entire swath of the seafloor all at once. Preliminary results indicate that the foot of the slope, the all-important point where the American continent connects to the ocean floor, may be much farther than previously believed. Perhaps as much as 100 miles. That would put the U.S. on a collision course with Canadian claims in the oil-rich Beaufort Sea. The irony in all this is that so far, the U.S. has not even signed the Law of the Sea Treaty because of objections by a handful of anti-UN senators, a situation many hope will change under the new administration in Washington. When push comes to shove and, and the UN debates these issues, the U.S. isn't part of that debate. I think that's the biggest frustration. I think as a scientist, I can continue to go out and map, but it would be nice if the U.S. could, could have a seat at that table when those issues are being discussed. All the more important because that issue will be the future of one of the world's last frontiers. Not just who owns it, but how to preserve and protect it.